My PhD is in 2D ecology of coral reef restoration. So what they usually do uh, with restoration projects is putting structures in the water and that's it. And then fish will aggregate there, so that is nice. Uh, but I think we can get more out of that. I think the fish can actually help us restore the reef. Being able to dive every day makes this location so beautiful. You just explore a new world every day by going underwater. And then when you come up, it's also paradise. Um, so those two worlds, yeah, I'm working in paradise. I think I can say that. Today is like a nice day because we actually go into the marine park, um, which is a no fishing zone. So the coral here is really beautiful and most importantly the fish is really abundant. Uh, so dives like today, they're really nice for us as well, like a mini holiday actually. So we've got a few nursery structures here in Kisite. Uh, those Christmas tree, basically PVC pipes with side branches in which the coral is hanging and growing. Uh, so we put around 14 of those here in the water. Uh, to compare how the coral grows here in the marine park as opposed to in the channel. Then because we don't go here very often, we use every opportunity to also do some additional measurements. Um, so also today we will measure current visibility, uh, some physical parameters of the water as well, to just see uh, in what water we are growing the coral. To simplify, you could describe the reef as corals, algae and grazing fish that are eating those algae. Now, both the coral and the algae are growing on the ground and they both need space, so they're in competition with each other. Coral grows really slowly, the algae grow really fast. But the reason why it's dominated by coral is because the algae are being eaten away by all those fish. Uh, what happens if those fish disappear is that the algae can grow unhindered and they will take over the reef. That is what we want to prevent and that is also what I want to use in the restoration process. So the things that we measure are pH, uh, salinity and oxygen and these are quite important uh, parameters that the coral needs to grow healthily. And so on the different locations we grow the coral, those values will differ and we want to see what impact that has on the coral growth. So I made a, a map on my laptop in which I put all the nurseries, all the artificial reefs that we place in the water. And what you see here is the nurseries we have right now, so all those little trees with the numbers. And you can see that they're placed close to the reef. Uh, that is all shallow water near the reef. And then if we go a little bit deeper, we also got some um, artificial reef structures, mostly for the fish, to attract the fish. So you've got a uh, big dome, antenna, and these are just rebar, metal, metal structures that we placed in the water. We are going to make trees here, uh, the nursery structures in which we grow the coral. Uh, for that we're going to need many loops and those side branches. So each tree will have six side branches, each branch will have ten loops. So one tree can uh, hold 60 coral fragments. I have to do more labor work like this than I expected. Yeah, it's quite a lot of drilling, sawing, making cement. It's also quite a large uh, part of my time. Yeah. I'm mainly helping with all the, the running revolution projects. Uh, so I'm making trees, I'm placing the trees together with uh, the group and we're putting the coral structures in them and we're measuring the coral to see how it grows. I wanted to do an internship uh, and I wanted to do a really nice internship. And so I was just looking but I couldn't find something in the Netherlands. So I went to the professor at the university and asked like what, what 
possibilities do you have for internships and maybe in Europe then if I cannot find anything in the Netherlands and then he was like well you can go to Kenya if you want we have revolution there and uh, it's a lot of diving and coral reef restoration so and then I thought, yeah, why not my private life is the project as well for example if I want to learn the coral or the fish to teach people, I will do that in my leisure time because I like to do it, but it's also useful for the work itself. So in that way, there's not really a distinction anymore between private life or, or the work. <laughs> The relationship that I'm having is working really well because we have the same vision. We love to be underwater, both of us. Um, and, and we have the same aim for this goal, to restore the reefs. Right now we have around 40 nurseries uh, containing 3,000 coral fragments, which sounds like a lot. But if you're actually going to use them to restore an area, it's still going to be very small, maybe one hectare. Uh, I want to. I want to restore an area of at least seven hectares. So we're gonna need to upscale all those nurseries. We're gonna need at least 15,000 coral fragments yearly. So that means getting a bigger group, um, having the community help us making everything and teaching them how to do it. Uh, because I cannot do it alone or with a few students.